Hello, hello, hello. It is your girl, Dad's on me 77. I am back with another video. So i like to say welcome back to all of my subscribers. To those of you that subscribe to my channel, thank you. To those of you that watch my channel sporadically but have not yet joined me, please go ahead and join me. And to those of you that it's your first time ever on my channel, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. This video is going to be a little bit fun, I believe. It'll give you a little bit of, I don't know, I guess a kind of look at me and kind of how I conduct myself with the YouTube channel. Um, and you, you'll get to know some interesting stuff, I hope. So throughout this video, you might see me looking down a little bit. Number one, I'm not used to being on camera a lot, um, just personal preference, and I got some notes written down. So a couple of weeks ago, I was tagged by the wonderful Miss DeAndra Bolton um, in a video or in a tag on how do I decide how I buy my bag or my bag rules. Um, again, her name is Deandra Bolton. If y'all have not checked out her channel, please do. The name of her channel is Fashion Without Limitations. She is superb, has a wealth of knowledge with bags. So let's start there. When we talk about what are my bag rules, um, I'm gonna, tell you guys some stuff about me that you probably don't know. So I have always enjoyed bags, but I did not get into bags until probably, I would say I was about 18 or 19. About that time, I had my first baby at 20. And so that's kind of it to that. My very first bag was a sack bag. It was an all leather bag. And I actually got that bag from TJ Maxx. We'll never forget it. I had that bag for years. When I tell you years, I had it for years. So fast forward, I did start getting into bags and I used to like buying from Coach Outlet. Coach Outlet was my place to go. I just really enjoyed their bags, pretty hip. You know, all of the good stuff. Let's fast forward again, and I'm telling you guys that so you'll understand my personal bag rules. So then I went through a phase where I started buying coach bags, and it was more or less because it was a coach bag. You know, when we're younger and we start our careers, there's certain things that you're like, I'm going to do. Well, I wanted to be able to buy nice bags. So I got into coach bags. That lasted for a little while. I never, I honestly will tell you, I never spent over $200 on a bag at that time. And there again, I would say that I was probably about 21, 23-ish, around that age. I had just finished nursing school. So I was just getting what I felt like my grown woman on. I was always like a hobo bag type of girl hobo and book bag because I had little kids. Always had something where my hands are free. So that's important to remember. Um, I always carried a bag where my hands were free. So I prefer shoulder bags and hobo bags. So then as my kids start to grow, um, I've just always been one of those mothers that I would always do for my husband and my kids before I did for myself. So my bags kind of went on the back burner. The bags that I did have, I took really good care of, but they kind of went on the back burner. I didn't really buy any more Coach bag, Gucci bags, Louis Vuitton bag. Never did any of that stuff while my kids were at home. Um, the most I would do was buy Vera Bradley. I did really enjoy Vera Bradley because we used to travel a lot, of course, with the kids. And Vera Bradley is wonderful for that. So let's fast forward again. Let's get to where we are today. So in 2021, I had surgery on my foot and I was reintroduced to my love of bags. I started watching what's in my bags on YouTube videos and I got hooked and that's when I started um, purchasing bags. So when you ask me how 
or what rules do I have for purse buying? For me, because I have not had several years of buying bags, I really feel like I'm still figuring out what I like. Um, you're at different stages in your life. I have always been a backpack hobo, shoulder bag type of girl. So I feel like I'm kind of still in that stage of figuring out what I like and what I want. So the number one thing for me is budget. So I do my purse buying a little bit different than some people might. Some people look at the price of the bag. I don't do that. I set a spending budget every month in my spending account. Now that could be used for purses, shoes, makeup, whatever I want to do, but that is my budget. So some months when I want to buy the more expensive bags, I will have to kind of curtail what I like but or what I'm going to purchase. But budget is my number one thing. Um, I think it's so important to stay on budget. I can admit I'm not ashamed to it. Um, I've been in the situations where I've had credit card debt up to here, um, compound with household responsibilities. Um, I don't ever want to do that again. So budget is the thing that drives my purse um, habit or my purse hobby. The second thing that I utilize when figuring out what type of bag I want is how does that bag fit my everyday lifestyle? Um, many of you know what I do for a living. Um, I am most of the time on the go. Once I get to my job, I'm there. So I'm not really carrying my bag a lot, but I do go from place to place to place. So one of the things that I look for in a bag is how does it function? It has to be one of those bags that I carry and I have my regular purse um, items in there, but I can throw a Walmart bag, I can throw a water bottle, sometimes a sweater, any type of extra things, maybe even my planner on top. So I like a bigger bag, but I don't normally pack it full. I need it so I can add other things to it. So how it fits my everyday life is very, very important. Um, in the last couple of years, the third thing that has been of importance is, to me is how does it fit my space? Yes. So I know the big craze on YouTube right now is everybody is really looking at their collections. They're either downsizing or curating a, a certain collection. I don't really fit into any of that right now because I want to give myself a chance to really experience what I like and what I don't like. So for me, what I had to do prior to 2021, I had like all of my bags and like totes and suitcases and totes and totes and you know, that type of thing. So what I did was over the past two years, I've worked on my closet. When we built our home, we had a room built on that I knew I was going to make into my dream closet one day. And so since that time, since me starting my channel, I've done a lot of work in that closet and I have dedicated purse space. And so I'm telling you guys all of that to say that is how I determine how many bags I keep in my collection. If I have to buy additional storage, well, I'm not buying additional storage. If it does not fit in my space that I have dedicated for bags, it got to go. It got to go. So if I want a new bag and that bag doesn't fit where it, I have bags now, I either got to get rid of something to purchase the new bag or I can't get it. Now, I know for some people that may be a little bit much, but purses make me happy. They bring me joy. It's fun. Um, we commonly joke about it saying it's like playing dress up with baby dolls. And I really think it is. I think purse buying and purse collecting is just like every other hobby. You have to have healthy boundaries set in place. 
um, for it to work. And so my space is my healthy boundary. If I have to start putting stuff in extra closets, extra rooms, things of that nature, it's getting way out of line and I need to do something about it. My number four rule, and this is probably a more recent rule. Um, DeAndra Bolton, she tagged quite a few content creators and there was one that stood out. If y'all have not checked her out, I know a lot of you have. Her name is Nothing But Bags. I love that she says that her purse is the center and, and her clothes are the accessory. So her bag is the focal point when she's getting ready and I can totally relate to that. Um, she is somebody that works from home. And so she and I, although I do go outside of my home, we kind of have the same thing. I'm going out, but a lot of my stuff when I'm going out is task driven. I'm going to the store to pick up this. I'm going to the post office for that. And so you really have to be mindful. And that goes back to my second rule is how does it fit my life? So my number four was have I spent time um, for me? I brought her up because she talked about research in one of her um, rules for bag buying. That is something I need to incorporate. But the thing that I did do is I do spend a little bit of time watching the price. Because remember, for me, budget was the biggest thing. So I do, once I like a bag, I will spend some time like watching it. Sometimes I'll tell my purse sister, sometimes I won't. And the crazy thing is sometimes I won't is because we know each other so well in our collection. They'll be like, Dazzle, that'll fit with so-and-so or that'll look good with so-and-so. I saw so I'm like, yeah, I need to go ahead and get it. So like my most recent um, purchase that fits that bill was the Michael Kors bag that I just did a video on. I'll insert a picture. But that bag I have been watching a long time. So I started, well, for me, it was a long time. I started watching it in the end of November of 2023. And I finally broke down and bought it in January. I did end up paying full price. And then right after that, it went on sale. So I did my due diligence, but if I could have waited just a little bit longer, I probably would have done a little bit better. And so just to recap, my four, because I do have four rules for buying a bag, is does it fit my budget? How does it fit my life? Does it fit my dedicated space? And have I spent time watching the price? So that one kind of goes back to budget as well. Um, so that's kind of weird, but it goes back to budget. So for me, um, again, I know a lot of people are talking about consumerism, excessive spending, um, and, and I do agree that there is always area for room for improvement when it comes to that. But I do think purse collecting is just like any other hobby. Um, you do have to put your restraints in place. And you know, notice most people that have a hobby where they collect things, it is consolidated to a certain area. So I do feel that my purse um, habit does fit that. Now, with that being said, I'm going to be completely transparent. Have there been months that I went completely over? Yes, there has. And I have kind of pulled back and tried to make sure that I was doing things the right way. Um, I may would, you know, just take it out of the next month's budget. But I don't penalize myself so much. Um, I did go on a no purse buying being in 2022. And um, that just doesn't work for me. Um, I apply people that can do it, but it just doesn't work for me. Instead of the FOMO, a uh, fear of missing out, um, it it just to me it feels like pun like I'm punishing myself. And not only that, I think one of the things for me, not only with purses but just in life is not my ability to stay away, but my ability to be in, in the presence of it and still be able to conduct myself accordingly. Um, when we talk about purse buying again, this new Coach Denim collection, psh, 
I love it. I love it. I know people talk about being trendy on the hype. Hey, I love the Coach Denim collection. Did really good. Um, I end up sending some pieces back and I ended up going with what I really wanted. So I'm really happy with the pieces that I secured. And um, I think I did a really good job with it. So those are my four purse buying rules per se. And I just wanted to add a little bit of something different towards the end. So once I decide I'm gonna buy this bag, what am I looking for? So the first thing I look for is size. Does this size fit the need that I'm buying the bag for? Um, most of my bags are medium to large. I do prefer larger bags. But like I said earlier, I like them so that I can add stuff throughout the day. Um, the next thing I look at kind of goes back to my purse buying rules. How does it fit my everyday life? Are the shoulder straps. Am I going to have to fight this bag? If I got to fight it or how do older people say put on airs that I'm a certain type of a person? And when I say that, I'm just saying I'm not a top handle girl most of the time. So you're not going to see me carrying top handles a lot. And that kind of goes back to what I was telling you about how I feel about my purse journey. I'm still learning what I like. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know I got some of y'all beating age, but... I never spoiled myself like this before. When my kids were in the house, I would never spend this type of money on a bag. Not saying that anybody that does is wrong, but my kids will tell you all my money went towards them. Um, I got my first Louis Vuitton in 2020. That's only four years ago, you guys. So I'm still experiencing things. Um, other than size and um, shoulder straps, I like a bag with feet. Yes, it is something about them feet click clacking on surfaces that just make me so, so happy. So happy. And then the last thing after I've decided I wanted this bag, the size works, the shoulder straps work, the feet, the color got to be on point. Um, I'm a neutral girl. I try to push myself and go for the bright colors. And I can do them, but I'm not going to carry it for a long time, which is why Y'all don't see I buy a lot of bright colored bags. I think probably the brightest color bag I have is my City Tote with the bulb that came out during the bulb pink collection with the flowers on it. I love that bag, but it is totally outside of my personality. If I were to give y'all a snapshot of my purse area, you would see browns, blacks, blues, navies, and a lot of creams. I do like cream bags. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I want to say thank you so much to Deandra Bolton for tagging me. This was really fun and it allowed me kind of to think about how do I plan to purchase a bag? What are my rules when I'm purchasing a bag? And to nothing but bags, thank you so much for listening. Um, not only watching my videos, but listening to some of the content that I'm saying, because you brought up one of the points that um, keeps me from feeling guilty or kind of makes <laughs> me sometimes feel guilty when I'm purchasing bags. It really means a lot. And thank you all in the purse community. Let's continue to support one another. Um, just enjoy um, the various stages that all of us are in in our lives and just continue to support one another on our love for bags, right? So as I always say, remember, 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 be good to others, but be even better to yourself because we cannot pour from an empty cup. Bye.